Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Dom. And we are Tom, Tom and Dom, Dom Travel. We recently took a cruise on Sky Princess for 14 nights and we sailed out of Southampton. We visited a number of ports in France, Portugal and Spain. Today is day six and we've reached the beautiful port of... Lisbon. Yes, we're both super excited because neither of us have been here before. So we can't wait to get off and explore. As we were super excited to get off the ship, we didn't plan uh, to go to the buffet or to go to the main dining room. We'd fully intended just to grab a quick breakfast from the International Cafe and then head out as quickly as possible. If as we disembarked Sky Princess in Lisbon, uh, we were met with some beautiful views of uh, the city. Yeah. Um, and we proceeded to walk along quite a relatively long walkway into the main port. Yes. As we got into the terminal, we discovered there were lots of tour providers and scouts looking for business. Um, that included um, the big red buses, the tuk-tuks, uh, people wanting to take you on individual tours. So there was lots going on. If you haven't booked an excursion in Lisbon, don't panic. Don't worry, uh, as soon as you step into that terminal, you will be greeted by so many different providers trying to offer some type of tour to you. Uh, both myself and Tom are not fans of booking excursions through cruise lines. We find them slightly overpriced and we much prefer to just get off the ship, explore independently, uh, and just you know make our own way round the destination yeah especially somewhere like lisbon where we've moored right in the city center uh, we didn't feel like there was no need to we could just get straight off and explore straight away we do do a bit of research before we get to every port just so we've got a basic understanding of the key tourist uh, attractions and methods of transport to and from Tom and I had done our research the night before and we discovered that you could buy an all-day travel pass from the metro station which gave you access to buses, trains, trams uh, and the metro service all in one for a relatively small amount of money. Yeah. So myself and Tom, we proceeded to walk directly to the metro station, which was around about 10 minute walk from the, tra uh, from the port terminal. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a disaster as we'd hung about for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes for the metro station to open and then discovered that they were actually on strike that day. So we had no way of purchasing those tickets. When we left the metro station, we couldn't decide what was best to do at, at first. We eventually came to the conclusion after looking at various options that it'd be best to walk up towards the cathedral. So we headed straight uh, through the old town of Lisbon with its winding streets. Um, steep. Steep. Very, hills, very steep. Um, towards the cathedral. On our way up towards the cathedral, we did happen to somehow magically attach ourselves to a, a German tour group. German tour group. <laughs> and we pretty much just followed them all the way up to the cathedral. Yeah. It's quite we handy. We weren't benefit benefiting from the tour, so I'm not a clue what they were saying. <laughs> no. But they were giving us a uh, good direction. <laughs> Once we walked up uh, various steep hills, we arrived at uh, Lisbon Cathedral. And the cathedral is set in a small uh, square area um, next to a busy road but uh, there are some cafes outside where you can stop um, and have a quick drink if you wanted to. Also this is the spot where all the tuk-tuks stop on their tours if you've picked up one of those from the port and what we did soon discover the tram comes straight past the cathedral as well. 
the tram was one of the key sort of attractions that we wanted to see and just by luck once again we just happened to stumble upon it. The tram was busy but not too packed. Um, it is at this point worth mentioning that there are a lot of pickpockets in Lisbon particularly operating on the trams we were told to be uh, beware. Yeah. When we were doing our research about the trams it was clearly sort of highlighted uh, that pickpockets are very active yeah. on the tram system in Lisbon and all tourists should be really weary. Um, even the tram conductor yeah. uh, told us to basically keep hold of our bags because essentially we had our backpack on and uh, he told us to sort of take it off and put it round the so other we way. Yeah, so we haven't gone mad and we shall see us in our videos wearing our backpack on the front. Um, that's the reason why. Yeah, not the, it's not the trend in this <laughs> one. We might be trendsetters, but... We might be. Oh, no, don't it. The tram that we used to do this journey was Tram 28E. Yeah. That's Tram 28E. Um, it's worth noting that because um, that's the one that you need to do the main tourist route uh, through Lisbon. Yeah, because the, the trams are used as public transport and commuters in Lisbon to get to and from work and supermarkets as well. So the tram network is quite extensive, but the best one is definitely 28. Yeah, yeah. For the tourist areas, 28. We got to the end of the tram route, which was a big open square, um, and what greeted us was massive queues for the tram to come back. So we definitely did the journey in the correct way. So that's from the cathedral to the main square, rather than doing it the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. The queues, as you'll see, are absolutely huge. Massive. Huge. Massive. We had a quick look round the, the square, Martin Moints, or something like on those lines. And uh, we decided that, because well, one of the goals of the day was to try a traditional pastel de nata. Yeah. So we basically typed into Google and it gave us directions towards the main shopping street, which was Rua Augusta. Yeah, Rua Augusta. So we basically proceeded to follow the wonderful Google Maps, yeah. and we came across a, a food festival in another square. Yeah. We came across this wonderful food market, didn't we, where there was lots of different stalls, from nuts to fruit, uh, amazing pina coladas in pineapples, um, there's lots and lots and lots of different things, so it's worth having a look if they've got that on. There was also a huge statue um, of a knight, which the square was named after, um, which we took some photos of as well. We continued to follow uh, wonderful Google Maps directions, and we, uh, after a short walk, we arrived at the main shopping street, Rua Augusta. Yeah, you know, it was actually quite easy to find, yeah. so I don't think you would really need Google Maps, yeah. uh, because everyone seemed to be heading in that direction. Rua Augusta is a, a very long street uh, with lots of uh, retail, restaurants, bars, lots and lots going on. Cafes, shops, lots of things. Um, right down the middle of the street as well there's lots of stalls and yeah. things going on. We were looking for one particular cafe that we'd heard of which was the Fabrica de Nata. So this is a, a cafe that produces and sells the Pasta de Nata uh, Portuguese tarts. You can see they're actually making the tarts in the window and when you go in the uh, cafe itself there's lovely seating areas inside or as we chose to do sat out in the main street and have our uh, pasta donata and as we do so often our coffee that we <laughs> that we have on every port which again was quite nice this time wasn't it, it was so, beautiful but definitely the star of the show was the pasta donata yeah absolutely um i'm not a fan of egg custard tarts no uh it's nothing like an egg custard tart nothing because someone did say to us oh it's going to be a bit like an egg custard tart the mm. pastry is beautiful mm. on this and the, the filling is yeah it's just really nice yeah really nice once we'd finished our wonderful uh, cafe latte and pastel de nata, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to continue walking down Rio Augusta and we happened to come across 
the big elevator. <laughs> yeah. Santa Josa Elevator or something like that? Is it? No, definitely not. <laughs> well, we apologise to any Portuguese viewers. Uh, neither of us speak Portuguese and our no. pronunciation is spot on. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator in Lisbon is a very popular tourist attraction. There were really long queues, so myself and Tom, we kind of just sort of stayed up at it, took a few photos, and then continued on our way. Yeah, in all honesty, we worked out that it probably would have taken us about two hours to get on the elevator, which would have been too long for us, too really. Long. Um, especially in the heat of Blue Springs, it was a sunny day. So we took a couple of pictures and continued on our journey. We then continued along Rua Augusta, heading towards um, the sea, so continued in that direction. Um, we came under the Rua Augusta archway then, right at the end of the street, which opened out once again onto a huge um, square. square, huge square with a statue in the middle again with a knight, I think it was a knight on a horse on top. Um, great historical knowledge that we've got. <laughs> um, so three sides of the square were buildings, the fourth side was opened out onto the well, it's not the sea technically, is it? it's the river, um, so it opened out onto the river. The square was very, very busy, lots of people, plenty of bars and restaurants to keep you entertained. As we walked through the square towards the river, um, we noticed that there was a very, very small, very small uh, beach uh, where you could sit on there or sit on the wall along the beach as many people were doing. So we decided to uh, spend a little bit of time sat on this wall, stood on the beach for a while, looking out uh, at the views over the river. After sitting by the river for a little while, we decided to make our way up um, to a viewpoint that we happened to notice while we were on the tram. It was really popular, really busy, and we wanted to see what was going on. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a walk back up to this viewpoint, but it was definitely well worth it. Yeah, well, yeah, to be honest with you, we are just uh, suckers for punishment, as you're saying, because we decided to walk back uphill for the second time today, uh, to where the tram had already passed when we were on the journey earlier. It opened out where you could have views of the Alfalma district uh, with all their beautiful rooftops and out over to the ship's uh, docked in port. Truly spectacular views um, for, for over the ships that were docked in port as well as the old time and Lisbon itself. From the balcony we could see other ships that were in port, so Mine Sheaf was in port as well. So that's where the German tourists came in earlier on. <laughs> yes, that was just a random group of German tourists. They were on uh, Mine Sheaf. And um, there was a Silver Sea shipping as well. Heading from the viewing platform that we were standing on, we walked back down through the Alfalma district, through those winding streets that we spoke about on our way up. Um, again, some wonderful little spots in that district, tiny little hidden bars. These are the perfect bars where you go if you want to see what the locals would eat and do. Um, and then which you headed downhill and when you got to the bottom of the hill, it opened straight back out to the port with opportunities to get straight back onto the ship. After walking round Lisbon for a few hours, uh, we were both a little bit tired, so as we'd made it right the way back to the port, we decided to get on board Sky Princess. Back onto the ship. Um, it, was kind of, it was a bit of a winding path through the port itself, wasn't it, through the terminal building? Yes, it's definitely quite a, a, a lot, I wouldn't say long, but it's it's very winding. Winding, yes. And there is an opportunity to go on the top of the building there as well, where you can have views of the ship and back over to the Alfama district if you wanted to. Uh, but we decided to head straight back onto the ship because we were hungry and ready for something to eat. As the sun was still shining and it was a really beautiful day in Lisbon, yeah, we both fantastic. decided that we were going to spend a few hours topping up the town in the retreat. Yes, so off we went, uh, headed to the retreat where we decided to order some food direct to the sunbed once again. 
uh, and we had a burger and some chips. So again, really watching our white. We want a <laughs> couple of frozen cocktails. A <laughs> couple as well, of frozen cocktails to go lovely. with it, which were lovely. So perfect diet for an afternoon of walking. One thing that does make Lisbon fantastic is the sail away. So after the retreat, we headed back to the room, really quick shower and change, and back out on deck, ready for the sail away. The sail away out of Lisbon is absolutely fantastic. Amazing. So many different things to see, monuments, uh, just looking at Lisbon as you're sailing away. Beautiful views it is in every direction, really. Um, and the magnificent sort of experience of going under the bridge yeah. and on a cruise ship uh, the size of Sky Princess you've only got a few meters clearance absolutely incredible it was really small the clearance wasn't it so we actually went up and stood in the mini golf area which was right at the top of the ship the highest that we could get yeah deck, deck 19 mini golf yeah, yeah and we were particularly close to the top of that uh, bridge. sail away we decided to head for something to eat but what we did notice that in the pool deck area um, in the Lido deck area sorry they had set up ready for movies under the stars now the good thing about movies under the stars is that you can see up-to-date movies on the big screen around the pool they also provide covers for the sun beds so they're really comfortable to sit in and the special treat is that they give out popcorn while you're watching those movies as well we continued to walk along or through Movies Under the Stars, make our way to Midship Elevators and then as it was seven o'clock it was time for our regular booking in the beautiful Soleil restaurant with our amazing waiters Enrico and Lawrence. Lawrence. The dinner once again was really lovely. This time we both went for the same options. Uh, we went for soup to start, yep. usual for me, a bit something different for Dom. Um, the duck as our main and we went for the souffle as our dessert. The souffle was absolutely amazing. Uh, our waiter Lawrence pretty much scooped the top off and then poured the custard in because yeah. apparently that's the way you're supposed to eat it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's, the way we did. Yeah, that's the way we did. After another amazing meal in the Soleil main dining room with Enrico and Lawrence, we hurried to Princess Theatre because the amazing Heidi Carlson was on with songs from Broadway. Yes, so uh, hurry, we better get back because we, uh, we were very late getting into dinner anyway. Um, so we were like finishing and we wanted to make it to Songs of Broadway because we are fans of uh, West End musicals and Broadway musicals. Once again, after the spectacular Heidi Carlson, we headed to Princess Live. So we're now in a bit of a routine. Watch the game show that was going on in Princess Live. Again, wonderful, great audience participation. Definitely worth the watch. Please remember, get there straight after the show because seating is a premium in Princess Live and people do head there very quickly after the shows. We left Princess Live early tonight um, because in the Princess Theatre there was an additional late night show with the comedian Tom Bins, Tom Bins yeah. who was on day one. Yeah, uh, yeah the first night first night. So we didn't stay in Princess Live to the very end. Uh, we thought, right, before we go and see this late night show, we'll just pop into our famous, uh, famous and most popular and appreciated bar, Good Spirits, for a quick drink. 
famous. Our favourite bar. That's the word. <laughs> Good spirits. It is famous for us because we love it. After our very, very long day in Lisbon, two shows in the Princess Theatre. Um, Good qu- spirits. Good Princess spirits. Live. All that jazz. Um, <laughs> we were absolutely shattered. Yeah. So, no food tonight, no drinks tonight, straight to bed. Straight to bed. Thanks for watching. Join us for our day seven aboard the wonderful Sky Princess, where once again we have another sea day and see what we get up to. For more from our Sky Princess series, click the link on screen now. now. Also, please don't forget to pop any comments you've got in the boxes below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on social media.